I've got another pretty cool and rather different data set to share with you today. And so this time I'm going to take you to the central part of the Great Barrier Reef. So we're going to go to Orpheus Island. It's about halfway between Cairns and Townsville and there's a James Cook University research station there. So it's a pretty special place to go and the reef is really, really accessible. So you can get to it straight from the research station in Pioneer Bay. So what I am really curious about is coral bleaching and we know that this is a massive issue for reefs around the world. We know that it's related to increase in sea surface temperature and climate change. And so this is what coral bleaching looks like. So we have some healthy coral on the left hand side of the screen here and you can see that the tissues are sort of this brownie colour and this means that the coral is able to photosynthesise or use sunlight to create sugars or food for it to survive. Now what seems to happen is that when the water temperature gets a little bit too warm for the corals over an extended period of time, the zooxanthellae or the chlorophyll that exists within the cells of the, or within the skeleton of the coral, it starts to create the food that becomes toxic for the coral itself. So the coral says, all right, get out, and it spits out those zooxanthellae from the coral skeleton. And so what's, what is left is just that skeleton. And so you can see that on the right hand side. And so we call this bleached because as you can see, it looks really quite white. Now, so what I was interested in looking at is trying to see if we can use remote sensing technology and in particular drones to understand the patterns of water circulation on the reef. So we know that we can use satellites to look at sea surface temperature, but over rather large areas. And that's not so relevant to individual corals or on the colony scale. So I used thermal imaging on my drone and these particular images are captured from a Flearview Pro on a 3D Robotics Solo. So it's a really small thermal camera and it measures temperature. And these are just a couple of the images that are within the data set that I'm sharing today. So these aren't quite as easy to process as some of the other images that I've previously shared because they're not actually geotagged, which makes them a little bit harder to stitch together. They're also not calibrated, so you can't measure the actual temperature from individual pixels in this in these photos, but you can see the, the difference in, in terms of the brightness. So areas in this case that are that are quite bright white there are warmer areas and the areas that are darker are cooler. So let's have a look at the image on the top left hand side to start with. And a couple of things that I really like that's quite cool about this is so we've got some boats here and we've got a ghost boat. So this there was obviously a boat there at, at some stage before the particular photo was taken. So it's kind of left a thermal shadow there, which is quite cool. But you can also see the little, the little channels of water coming down as, as the tide's gone out and you can see the variation in water temperature. And I like to think of this as like when you go swimming at the beach and quite often you get this experience where you, where you swim through cooler patches and warmer patches. And often when you're swimming through a warm patch, people joke about someone peeing somewhere near you. But of course that's not what it is. It's just different temperatures of water and the different currents moving around. So that's really what I was trying to capture when I was looking at using the drone thermal imagery, because you can see this really, really high level of detail in the water. Now the bottom right image, we can see some vegetation here. So the vegetation is a lot cooler than the rocks along here. And there's more rocky areas here. And then we have the water. So in the, in the data set that I have, there's quite a lot of the water body as well as the mangroves and the rocks as well. And these images were taken just before dawn. So we're not looking at reflected sunlight at all. It's the emitted temperature from the ground and in some cases from the water as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing and hearing about what you might do with these data as well. So please download them and let me know how you go.